the more freedom that we can create through the ball here as far as that's the end goal, it's not right here, then we start to see more freedom in the chest. We start to see the eyes release down. It's quite interesting to, to watch you do that. And we we're just discussing before we started here, certain unique elements that we see within some of the best players in the world over history. And one of them is a very early release of the head or the eye line towards the target. And we've seen players specifically like uh, David DeBowell and Annika Sorenstam really getting this look that their eyes are almost in front of the golf ball at the moment of impact. And that's what you were simply demonstrating there. Sure. Talk to us about why that might be a beneficial movement for a player uh, who's really struggling with their ball striking, right? Specifically doesn't rotate or move well through the golf ball. Why would they do that? I think the key word that you mentioned there was rotate. You know, when we're releasing the head, obviously with the connection to the chest, it really does free up this torso to move in a much more free and easy manner. And that has a huge influence on the impact. I'd also say golfers who tend to sit back too far this way, as a concept of trying to keep their head too fixed over the balls can really like limit how they move through the ball. And as we know, all these things affect contact. They can affect you know, where the club's bottoming out, so to speak, the low point. And I feel a lot of these players, as you mentioned, like Sorensen and Duval, Robert Allenby back in the day, Henrik mm. Stenson, you know, they really have a much, much better awareness of where they're going, not where the ball is as far as getting to the end early. And I would say when they're doing that, their whole focus is on going through. And you could argue some of them as a fade move, it's a little bit uh, easier to fade the ball when we're rotating and getting more open. But what I notice about all those swings is how free they are through the ball. They're not sort of holding anything back or leaving anything behind. Yeah, and I think without a doubt, kind of the biggest catalyst for players doing this throughout their motion is their mates telling them that they hit a poor shot because they kept their, or they lifted their head. So therefore they keep it down more, but they don't allow that or facilitate any rotation, uh, allowing their neck to release towards the target. But if you were to look at any other sport, and even though golf is played from a static position, we still need to be dynamic and athletic to produce power. Absolutely. There would still be an element in tennis of this rotation, this head moving in a direction of our target, even though we make impact here, we're simply not just staying there waiting for impact and then turning through. Correct. And I think it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting to note, if any player at home is just there and they're on the range, film yourselves without hitting a golf ball, thinking about the target and swinging momentum towards the target. And you'll be so surprised how easy it is to get onto the lead foot and how much your body can move through the ball. And if you did like a little overlay of your worst shot, yeah. or just in general striking the ball versus that swing, you will go, God, why don't I move like that all the time? And a lot of it has to do with your intention. 100%. Yeah. yeah. One, you're swinging towards the target, the ball's getting in the way. And the other, you're hitting at a ball and hoping it goes towards the target. Exactly right. And I like that word intention because the more freedom that we can create through the ball here, as far as that's the end goal, it's not right here, then we start to see more freedom in the chest. We start to see the eyes release down. And if you think about all these other athletic sports like tennis, is there actually a focus on the ball as it connects with the object? I would argue it's not. It's such a reactive mm. movement for a lot of people because the ball's moving. And often the ball's on the ground and we have an intention to hit at it versus let's say move through it, which again offers a way more natural way to go through the shot and often helps with contact, helps to get the chest more open, all those good things that we like to see. And it's interesting, like I believe that the nature of the equipment and the fact that it's static, it really does induce all these inconsistencies with players because small club, small ball, small target, we're over it, it's not moving, it's almost like fixate, don't move and just hit the ball, like we're gonna get better. but. If you think about if golf was played, the ball was slightly rolling towards us and bear in mind the equipment was a little bit bigger, you would be walking into it. You'd be matching your eyes with the target. Yes. No one would ever be hanging back, right? Yes. They wouldn't be like staying down through the ball and chicken winging. Their body would be super athletic. Nearly every single person the first time they played golf. And one of the interesting things I do with some of my students sometimes if they're having a challenge with this, if I get you to stand over the ball and just demonstrate a look where let's say the head's too far back or the eyes are too far back at the ball. And then I tell them to keep going through from there. They feel very restricted. I'm mm. assuming in that position <laughs> and, right. yeah, and it's not a very natural feel. Yeah. Now doing the same thing as I add a little bit of rotation, 
yeah, just my arms straight away. They just feel so long, right? Because I have the room because my body is actually rotating through the golf ball a lot. So a really good way to practice this is scaling. Mm -hmm. And often I would tell students that they have to do three swings. The first one at the ball, they would start to release the head. The second one would be at hip high. And the third one would be as they start the downswing. And I just start to look at how the motion changes each and every time. Mm. And it's amazing. The third one is usually the one that they have to go for because they've been so pre-positioned to be way back here and the head staying so far back and down. I think the golf swing and the motion of it can be made far more simple for players to comprehend of how this at all should work if you remove the front bend element, right? So for example, exactly what Steve was saying, that from there I'm thinking about releasing my head as I'm starting my downswing and I feel so free. But if we lift this golf ball up, so it was belly button height, and I said to you, anyone, hit the ball in that direction as far as you possibly can, there would be this natural subconscious motion where you would be reacting to that target and you would be so much more rotated then if I add in a little bit of right side bend, well, that's within reason in a simple fashion impact. Release the club down the range, yeah. you wouldn't see all the crazy Correct. stuff. Correct. So uh, doing little baseball swings like that and just feeling free and soft and allowing your body to turn through, being okay that the golf club is going to come through in such a manner where there's a whole bunch of guys sitting in a room making this golf equipment in such a way which is going to come back square, assuming you've got a good setup, mm -hmm. right? You don't need to control it and force it as much as a lot of players are out. Correct. Right, so releasing the head certainly helps. So a three-stage drill you're saying with players, starting off by trying to release their head at the moment in which it's at the ball if they're not used to it, right? So eye line, what are we looking for here, Steve? Like moving on the same angle as what I'm tilted on towards the target? Exactly. Right, so I would go through there, just a little half swing. Mm -hmm. Right? And then let's say the next stage would be when my hands are coming down in hip height. So then I'm just trying to tilt my head on its axis still. Let it go a little earlier, yeah. And then let's do it right at the top. And it just, what I really noticed there is that the whoosh of the golf club got later and later and later the earlier I released my head. There you go. And if you were to see someone who cast the golf club, right? Let's say the opposite, I'm not releasing, I'm actually looking backwards, it would happen up here. Absolutely. Now that's going to translate into this sort of look here, right? So why don't you jump in and show us a good rep of how it would look. Let's say you've mapped it out, you've done the three different levels. Yep. And then you're going to go through and you're going to nut one down there. Okay. So I'm going to really feel this one around hip height because I feel like for a lot of students that's a good middle ground and they're going to start to get the right look going through. Yeah, beautiful. Right, and just looked like shifted your pressure so well onto the front foot, body was rotated nicely, and went dead straight at your target. Felt really free. great job.